Has anyone been for a Covid test? I have. It's one of the weirdest experiences of my life. Some proper weird sci-fi movie. First of all, why was I going for one? I don't know about the rest of you. I'm imagining I have Covid-19 every single day. If I run up the stairs too fast, cramp in my leg, it's a touch of the Covid. Covid scotched my muscle the other day. I ate a bit of food too quickly, went down the wrong hole. I got a sugar puff caught in my throat. It's the Covid's. <coughs> I've got a touch of Covid in my throat. Everything's up. The other day I went to have a wee and my wee came out wonky. Covid's in the urethra. I was convinced. Anyway, I went for the Covid test. You arrive the drive through Covid test. There's a, a guy in a Hazchem suit who just says, do not wind your windows down. You approach. Your Covid test is hung off of your wing mirror. You carry on. The next person scans your QR code. Do not open your window. You get to the last one. You are allowed to open your window. This person is in a double Hazchem suit like Elon Musk is about to launch the fucker onto Mars. You then have to hang your head out of the window and they produce a cotton bud with a really thick girth and a massive helmet head and then stab it into your throat 10 times and then up your nose. I don't know about you, but stabbing something into my throat tends to produce a bit of a gag reflex. I bet Donna from Basildon's watching this going, not me, babe. <laughs> they shove it in your throat and then up your nose. It was like being in the shittest dogging video I've ever seen. It was like someone with OCD had made a dogging video. I really like the idea of anonymous sex, but I also want to be in a sealed Hazkem suit. That's it, in your mouth, in your mouth, now up your nose, you dirty cow. Mouth, nose. We can now visit each other in our social bubbles. That's weird. Is that what mating is gonna be like in the future? Is that what it'll be like in a hundred years? We just move along in sealed silicon bubbles. Males just looking for females, doing dances, lads, from inside our bubbles, signalling to potential mates who, if they're receptive, present their blue vulvas up to the edge of their bubbles. Gary, my blue vulva is receptive. It's blue because they've covered their whole flange in antibac. And we can just move our bubbles together and penetrate inside for a, a scheduled mating, clean ourselves off with TCP, and then separate to raise our children in gender neutral vegan pods. Quarantine's in place, hooray! Anyone who lands, 14 days isolating. As they get off the plane, they're directed straight to a sealed hotel. No, 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 don't be silly. That would work. What we're gonna do in Britain, right? After the plane lands, you're gonna isolate wherever you're staying. Now to get to wherever you're staying, yeah, you just need to go on a Piccadilly line, change it to Victoria, just go along Oxford Street, uh, go to the COVID spin through where you actually gob at a few thousand people. And once you're in North London, isolate there. That way, you've only touched about 28,000 people on the way through, sorted. Let's do quarantine at the end. Makes sense to me, to prevent a second wave. Yeah, what I'm gonna do next time, there's a Rottweiler on the loose. I'm gonna let it into my house. Then when it's eaten most of my family, shut the door in case a second fucking Rottweiler comes. I've already spoken about the statue. No one wants to hear my opinion of the statue debate because it's too boring. Yeah, there's two choices. Smash the statues to dust, erase history, and pretend like Winston Churchill never existed. Or all lives matter. Oh, lives matter. <laughs> lives matter. I want a statue of Hitler wanking off Edward Colston in Trafalgar Square into his mouth. I want a statue of Hitler noshing off Mussolini in Trafalgar Square whilst Edward Colston has a patronising cultural appropriation dance in the background. A puppet. A puppet of Edward Colston. Like, those aren't the two choices. Smash the statues to the ground till there's nothing or inappropriate celebration of a villain. Just to be totally boring, there is something in between called having an adult culturally engaged debate where we listen to people who think the opposite of to us, learn something, even if it's repellent to hear, and then at the end of it, come to some sort of compromise where we take these historical figures and actually learn a bit more about them. Not plugging, but I do a series for Radio 4 called Evil Genius. It turns out almost every great person you could think of was a bit of a bell end too. As a society, we just need to decide how much of a bell end they were and whether we put their bell end face at the end of our street. It's quite simple. I demand the right to laugh at a comedian with a black face. Where's the fucking arm, right? When I was at school, 
there weren't no harm in it. We all went to school the next day. We did the black impressions to the black kids. It was so funny. Yeah, the black kids were crying at playtime. For grow a fucking pair, would ya? It is for the artists and the comedians themselves to decide if they've got something to apologise for. God knows I've screwed up countless times and gone too far and offended people and then apologised or haven't and said, up yours, I'm a comedian, I do what I like. It's for them to decide and then for the channels. Allow a conversation to take place. What are you fucking scared of? I will say this though, if we're gonna have people calling for the heads of comedians, I don't think this comedian should ever work again. And then channels, big corporations, taking these comedians away and removing their work. If that has to happen, can you explain to me why the same treatment is not being meted out to our prime minister who is cracking the same freaking jokes in the same freaking year? You heard Boris Johnson's 2003 material, who wants to hear my stuff about the watermelon smiles and the pickaninnies? Yeah, <laughs> fucking nice one, Boris. Love a bit of racist banter. No, 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 it's not racism. I'm posh. When I'm posh, it's sort of intellectual badinage. It's different. You're working class. So when you laugh at something on mainstream telly, it's lowbrow. But when I do it in The Spectator, it's clever and Latin and ironic. Hooray! Hooray for posh racism. It was different times. You've got to understand... Like, your nana wasn't racist, it was different times. Betty, from across the road, she's 83. She doesn't understand. You can't expect her to substitute that word. Yes, I, she shouldn't have used that racist swear word over the park, but she's 83. She can't change what she's saying now. What? I'm so sorry, has, has Betty got dementia? No, 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 she's perfectly well. Then she can fucking change, can't she? Betty can educate her. Do you know what? Betty knows every fucking piece of business in this street, the nosy cow. She does about four Sudokus a day, completes five crosswords, can probably name the DNA sequence of the Coronation Street characters, but she can't change her language a little bit. No, I'm only poor Betty. Oh no, I've lit a cross and I'm walking across the park. Silly me. I just realised that was all quite angry. Let's finish on a kitten. Oh, tiny kitten, his name is Roy. I pop his head, it's only a Satsuma.